Let's talk about neuromyelitis optica. So neuromyelitis optica or NMO is a autoimmune disorder and it's characterized by demyelination affecting the optic nerve, spinal cord, and brainstem. There's also necrosis of the cells as well. So the characteristic antibody that is associated with this disease that you need to know is a serum aquaporin 4 IgG antibody. The disease most classically presents in a woman in her 30s and it's much more common in women than men. So the attacks are characterized by optic neuritis, transverse myelitis, or brainstem syndromes and the symptoms typically develop over the span of days. For optic neuritis, it's typically more commonly bilateral in NMO than in multiple sclerosis, and the symptoms can include eye pain that's worsened by movement, decreased visual acuity and decreased color vision, and a afferent pupillary defect may be seen on exam. For the transverse myelitis, depending on the level of the lesion, you may have either paraparesis or quadriparesis. There can be loss of sensation below the level of the lesion, as well as bowel and bladder dysfunction. One thing that may help you differentiate NMO from multiple sclerosis is that these spinal cord lesions commonly involve three or more vertebral segments, and these are called a longitudinally extensive lesions. The lesions are typically also more complete lesions of the spinal cord compared to multiple sclerosis, which may incompletely affect the level of the spinal cord that the disease is at. For the brainstem syndromes, the one that is sometimes tested is called area postrema syndrome, and that is because it happens in the medulla in the area postrema uh, area and the most common symptoms are nausea and vomiting as well as intractable hiccups. For evaluation, a positive aquaporin 4 IgG in the serum confirms the diagnosis, although with the caveat that a minority of patients can have antibody negative disease and these patients will need evaluation for a similar antibody mediated disease called anti-MOG disease, which can present uh, with similar characteristics. An MRI with and without contrast of the spinal cord, brain, and orbits is typically done at the initial evaluation. This will help you characterize lesion burden and the without contrast part you can see any lesions that have happened in the past as well as sometimes you can see the new lesions and the with contrast portion if it is contrast enhancing will identify the new lesions so csf will show pleocytosis and elevated protein if it is done and the oligoclonal bands interestingly are more commonly negative in this disease. Most patients do not have positive oligoclonal bands, whereas it's the opposite in multiple sclerosis. For treatment in acute attacks, these are typically treated with plasmapheresis and or IV glucocorticoids. The data is kind of sparse. There are also disease modifying agents for reducing relapses. So eculizumab is one and it binds C5 to block the formation of the membrane attack complex in the complement pathway. And so because of this, you'll need a meningococcal vaccination. Inebilizumab binds CD19 and depletes B cells, and this will need hepatitis B and tuberculosis screening. Satralizumab binds IL-6 receptors and suppresses inflammation through the IL-6 pathway and this also needs hepatitis B and tuberculosis screening, as well as liver enzyme function testing. For prognosis, acute attacks will partially or fully resolve over months. The lesions in the medulla can cause respiratory failure and death, and it also looks like 
the high aquaporin-4 antibody titers seem to be associated with more relapses and higher disease burden.